Hello and welcome back. In today's video, we will be looking at one very interesting enterprise integration pattern called circuit breaker. So what is circuit breaker? Let's first just try to have a high level understanding of circuit breaker and after that we will be doing a full hands-on uh, workshop where we will try to implement uh, this very interesting enterprise integration pattern. All right. Okay. So the circuit bre breaker pattern is basically inspired by the real world electric circuit breaker, which is used to detect excessive current draw and fail fast to protect electric equipment. Yeah? You, you probably heard or you have seen it in, in your house that you have uh, one circuit breaker. In software world, okay, the, the software based circuit breaker works on the same notion. Okay, it, it basically encapsulates the operation and then it monitors it for failures. It has three stages. Okay, let's just try to understand these three stages and how they basically work. So first stage, which is right over here is called closed. Uh, where is my cursor? Yeah. So closed means when everything is operating successfully, you do not have any failure in your software okay then we have stage called open so when failure is detected and the breaker opens to short circuit and fail fast in this state the circuit breaker avoids invoking the protected operation and it basically avoids putting additional load on this already struggling service or 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 your api okay so what it will do basically you, you may make a call to external service or some resource you detected a failure then application will basically stop sending the load to that that resource or that api okay and which means now circuit breaker breaker has been opened for you then we have this final stage called half open what is half open means after a short period in the open state Okay, uh, an operation is attempted to see whether it can complete successfully. So basically, we are just trying to check the resource which was failing earlier, has it come back or not? Okay, can I can I transfer or send all of my load to that resource? Yes or no? If the answer comes no, then we go back to this open state one more time. If answer comes service has recovered and i have started to seeing uh, let's say successful responses then we basically reset our breaker and then we go to this closed state and then we remain in the closed state until we are getting successful responses okay as soon as we have a failure we trip the breaker and then we go to this open for for fail fast okay attempt reset half open trip breaker so depending on the outcome you will either go back to open state or closed state okay so this is the the theoretical uh, part or the theoretical understanding of how circuit breaker works now let's try to implement a use case so we have this business requirement um, which says given a call to a web service when call to service takes more than 500 milliseconds and and this this and part is is quite critical and 99 percent of the requests fail then hold subsequent request for five seconds and return some some sort of static response you do not want to keep bombarding your your um, failing or struggling resource and it's saying a last statement after that you retry okay so basically what we will try to do we'll try to implement um, um, uh, api call okay uh, we'll monitor the response of that that api if it doesn't give us response in 500 millisecond we would basically and then also we need to check okay the 99 percent of the request should should fail okay then then only we'll we'll open this this uh, circuit breaker otherwise if you have like you know um, random failures that could be for for any reason we don't want to kind of you know enable our our circuit breaker that can be you know um, a false positive as well so basically we would like to to check okay if 99 percent of the requests are failing then only open the the circuit breaker uh, and then for five seconds then you hold on okay all the client requests will either get a failure back or they will get some sort of you know static response and after five seconds we will be retrying again okay so you remember the the, the diagram 
if we have to implement all this thing in pure java or any other programming language you can just imagine how much of code you will have to write okay first you will have to 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 build some sort of monitoring system which will be monitoring every single request going to the resource okay and it will be monitoring for um, okay is it taking more than 500 millisecond yes or no based of that like you know then it has to 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 keep counter of something called like you know how many requests are failing in in you know i made 100 requests did like you no know, 50% of the requests fail or like you know the 99% of the fail all or all, all 100% uh, requests fail a lot of code as you can see then again logic like you know you have to then put uh, some sort of um, handler that that okay um, for next five seconds we are not allowed to invoke that external web service after five seconds we have to retry if if answer comes back you know then we close the circuit uh, or or you know reset the cir circuit and then business as usual as i said if you have to implement this in in pure java <laughs> a lot of code will be required but we won't have to do that because that's why we have um, apache camel uh, to help us here in apache camel with a few lines we can implement this very complex design pattern this this very complex business use case okay let's take a look so let's open our ide so this is our ide okay and i already have a spring boot application so what we will be doing first thing first thing we'll have to add a dependency for uh, apache camel circuit breaker so this is the dependency you will be required org apache camel camel uh, resilience for j so what camel is doing basically it's making use of open source library called uh, resilience for j um, so this 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 open source library is a lightweight fault tolerance library it's basically inspired by netflix hysterix okay but it's purely designed for functional programming so what apache camel has done it has kind of uh, you know abstracted all the complexity of of using using this library and it's it has given us very nice component to 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 make use of this library so you simply need to add this dependency in in your application and then you are good to go so what we will do first thing we'll build a, a root so once i have added my dependency uh, you just uh, basically load the dependency which i have already loaded on top of that first thing as a requirement let's i have built a very basic web service okay what this web service is doing just to kind of mimic our business use case so we can test it we can prove it that things are working this hello web service it takes some you know some 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 sort of sleeping time and what's this this doing is based on the input um, or whatever the bound number is it's randomly it's going to sleep between you know whatever the sleep time in millisecond is passed by our client like it can be you know one second two second whatever so if things are greater than 500 then you know i'm just printing a little message saying i'm going to sleep for a long time so we can we can monitor the failures okay otherwise i'm going to sleep return back my response over here Let's build a root first of all. So, how do you build a root um, in Apache Camel? This is a just plain class. I'm just gonna decorate that with component. Okay, so so we can basically register this into our Spring Bean. After that, you'll have to extend uh, root builder. There we are, and root builder is asking you to implement a method called configure. We have built this this thing, configure. Now. Let's start with very, very basic things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this very basic stuff. So I'm saying every one second, okay, you can, you can reduce this time, but I'm just saying every one second, make a call to this uh, service, which we have written just now. Okay. And then just print a body. Good. It's uh, right now. We are not monitoring how long it's taking uh, for the response to come back. We are not monitoring the failures we are not you know doing any sh short circuit or or circuit breaker or anything like that very simple um, uh, thing so let's just run this application first so what we're gonna see is every one second 
uh, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Yeah. So what you are seeing over here is that every one second we are making call to uh, this web service and then it's it's saying I slept for 688 millisecond. This one slept for 141 millisecond. Another call took like you know, 600 millisecond. Another call took maybe 429. So they are all random. This one is, is quite slow. Like you know, it took 964 milliseconds. If we go back to our user story, user story was saying if request takes more than 500 millisecond, then we have to basically time out this 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 request okay so let's try to implement this thing first and after that we'll start um, enhancing uh, more more complex scenarios all right so let's stop our application so first thing what we want to do is we would like to implement a short circuit so over here simply say circuit breaker all right i have added my uh, circuit breaker and then I have to end my circuit breaker over here. Circuit breaker takes something called, so this is my request, all right. And circuit breaker will take something called um, on fallback, okay. So if I say on fallback, we would like to, let's say, send some sort of static, um, static response. So what I can simply do is I can say, Send me a um, you know a static response called uh, constant, and I can say static fallback message. All right. So we have now added circuit breaker. We are saying when things fail, do this. Now you must be wondering, that's good, but where are we actually monitoring how long this this particular request is taking? Okay. So now let's add that thing as well. So as I said we have to now uh, add this, um, uh, this this components configuration, resilient um, 4J configuration. So over here, what we simply going to do is we will say timeout enabled. By, defa by default, timeout enabled is false. So first thing you have to do is you have to say timeout enabled equal to true. All right, timeout duration. How much duration? This takes in milliseconds. Okay, so if, if you just hover your mouse, um, the, the duration is in milliseconds, as you can see over here on the documentation. Okay, I'm gonna close this file now. So I am saying, please monitor the, the request and monitor it for 500 millisecond. After, after that, you, you basically disconnect it. Okay, and then we're gonna end the, the configuration. There we are. Let's just, just put it over here. So this thing, is related to this particular component which i have just used now if i restart my application at this point what we have done we have added a bit of configuration to monitor the the failures okay or the timeouts and after that i'm jumping and returning the the the, the constant or static message okay so if we while the application is starting so we have now added call to service takes more than 500 milliseconds. So I have implemented this thing. This one yet to go. This one is yet to go, but we have implemented end part. Okay, retry static responses and then retry will be implementing a little later. So come back to our application. So if I now pause the, the screen, what you will notice. All right, so where is a good response so it's saying start start so something went wrong in our implementation let's just look so it's saying i'm starting starting so yeah most of the requests are long sleeps so which means all of them are failing and that's why we are returning static uh, fallback message okay as you can see but where things were slow we should have written or printed something so let's just go back to our code. So we said, and we we ended this thing as well. Mm, but what we have not done, we have not printed the body in successful scenario. So I think what I can do is I can move and over here. Yeah, this makes sense. So basically what we are saying is my circuit breaker is up to my circuit breaker is here 
this is my on fallback this is and okay so after that we will be printing the body so let's just restart our application if all goes well what we are expecting is we should be printing the response as well as the failures okay the, as you can see now over here when things took if you just pay attention to this this particular failure block so we started our call but then we slept for 592 millisecond which is more than our threshold so we breached our threshold which means we have to return the static fallback message and then we ended however in cases where you know the the threshold was under the 500 millisecond and in this case it was only 292 millisecond we got the response back from our server which means part of our our circuit breaker is now working which is basically it's monitoring the the timeouts okay it's if it's taking more than 500 millisecond it's, it's you know just just killing the request and then returning the 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 static response okay so what was our next part of the user story it was saying monitor for 99 percent of the the failures okay so let's just do that so if our now if i have to say this failure rate threshold by default it's 50 percent so it, it monitors like okay 50 percent of the requests are failing um, then i'm gonna you know enable or 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 uh, open the 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 circuit breaker otherwise everything just uh, business as usual we want to be a little bit more aggressive over here so i'm saying failure rate threshold has to be 99 percent okay 99 percent request if failing then as soon as that starts to happen then then i'm gonna kind of you know enable or open my my circuit breaker all right um, one more thing we we have to do basically is um the user story said wait for five seconds okay then i'm gonna say wait duration in open state when my circuit breaker is open I'm going to wait for five seconds. So this takes uh, duration in seconds. So I'm simply going to say wait for five seconds. Uh, another part of the another thing we, we can do over here is we have to say when I'm in this state, then automatic transaction in blah, blah, blah is enabled. Yes. So it can automatically monitor after five seconds make a one request check if things are working okay and then then it can kind of you know um, reset our, our circuit breaker all right um, there are many other things you can do over here like you now you can say okay how many requests are permitted when as soon as you know the five second threshold or time uh, this this waiting period um, is has passed because you don't want to like you know again send thousands of requests and then wait them to fail what you can do is it has a very kind of you know uh, great features or, or configurability fine grained configurability you can say as soon as i wake up from this five second period i just want to send one request check the response of it and then basically you know completely um, reset my circuit breaker okay so there are like you know features such as if you read it's called permitted number of calls in half open state you know half open state is when you know uh, it, when it's ready to basically check if things are there or not but that's okay um, let's just test this thing now what we are expecting what we are expecting is as soon as a failure occurs ie you know 1% failure occurs I am going to hold on my next five requests okay before sending it to server and then just return static response okay that that's what our user story said so let's just start our application all right so yeah as you can see now as soon as one of the requests failed for the first time so this was this this was a successful response but somewhere here we we noticed there was a one failure which means one failure we have to kind of you know um, open our, our circuit breaker okay and after that you will notice one two three four okay and and this was fifth it is itself so then for next five 
seconds we were just returning the static and then we retried and this then you can see a response from server came okay maybe after that one more thing failed it's okay we continued okay good 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 but as soon as like you no know, maybe 90 uh, let's say one or two percent request failed then it's going to go back to that that static fallback okay when then it's going to try for five as you can see over here as soon as server notice that okay one percent of requests are failing then for next five calls of five seconds it did not make any request to our server okay and as soon as things you know um, set it back it has retried and then as you can see it just gone back and then getting the response back from server perfect okay so that's what i wanted to uh, discuss today um, this was circuit breaker design pattern i hope uh, you enjoyed it okay you liked it um, please share um, this video and subscribe to my channel if you have not um, and uh, and and leave some sort of feedback um, or, or comment at the bottom uh, what sort of videos would you like to see in, um, in 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 next attempt thanks again for your time i'll see you in the next video bye for now